Hi, I'm Donna Wilder. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central. Every quilt tells a story, and you won't want to miss the tales that we have to tell today. That's right, Donna. Our celebrity long arm teacher has some fun stories associated with each one of her quilts. We'll take a ride to a country bed and breakfast, a perfect location to display some vintage quilts. We also have some great ideas to button up your projects. So let's get started. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. My guest today is not only a good quilter, but she's also a good friend. Joining me is Ellie Jost. Welcome, Ellie. Thank you, Donna. I'm happy to be here, and I am delighted to present this project to your viewers today. It is so delightful and happy and cheerful, and it just makes me happy thinking about it. Well, it's a great little wall hanging, and yes. it has so much color and design and everything combined and I, together. I love color, and I just love the way this whole thing came together, and the inspiration for it is just... Oh, so much fun when you think about where inspiration comes from, whether it's flower or art. Uh -huh. And in this case, it came from buttons. Buttons? Yes. Well, wow. let's take a look. <laughs> take a look at these. Aren't these adorable? These are hand-painted, and they are by the contemporary designer and artist Mary Engelbright. Sure, they have that definite look of her Absolutely. style. Absolutely. Look at the little watering can and the fried egg flower uh -huh. and the roses. Now what we did here was blow them up to make our appliques. You see here we have them blown up 400% uh -huh. to make the appliques for the quilt. But mm. before we go further into that, I do want to show you one more of my favorites. I love this little birdhouse. Oh, isn't that cute? And this was used for the little wall hanging behind me. And I love the way we use the buttons to create the polka dots in the fabric here. Uh-huh. That looks great. Isn't that cute? And I like the wall hanging as well. Oh, yes. And now, that's easy, too. Once you get this... Enlarged the, um, the designs uh -huh. here, 400%, because that's the size we wanted for this particular okay. project. And now we are going to copy them a number of times over and over again to create patterns that we can cut out. So you oh. see, here's the watering can, yeah, and you see how I now have taken it, cut it out, oh, and by yes. tracing, what a good idea! The label. So you do that with all the appliques, mm -hmm. and then we'll take these away. Yes, here. take it okay. away our cute little buttons, and now we make our appliques. Super. And what I've done here is I've taken the pattern pieces mm -hmm. and I've placed them onto uh, two laser layers of fabric, right sides together, mm -hmm. and this gets stitched all the way around and. Once it's stitched, this would be trimmed and then turned to the right side. Okay. So we now have a spout for the watering can. Mm -hmm. And here is the watering can. Again, it's the two layers of fabric stitched together. And in order to turn this, because it's stitched all the way around the outside edge, we need to make a slit in the fabric and then it's turned right side out and pressed. Great. And, and that's nice when you're using applique like that. You don't have raw edges to turn that's under. That's right. It's a nice really finished good. edge and it's really easy to then apply them uh -huh. to your fabric. So all of the pieces were done that way. Mm -hmm. And now we have our watering can that is almost put together. You see I have all of the pieces put together right. here. But the fun begins when you start to add your buttons and I love the way this turned out here. We wanted to create that effect of the checkerboard in the watering can, so I've used square, roundish type buttons, uh -huh. and we would place another one here and another one here to create that check effect in the fabric. And then certainly we would add more buttons to the centers of the flowers. 
And look how pretty these look. It gives it that three-dimensional look, which exactly. is really fun. It makes it pop. Absolutely. So then this would be stitched together, little French knots to uh, finish the top of the can mm -hmm. here. Maybe another little button here for your, ribbit, your rivet on your um, handle. Mm -hmm. And once we do that, we are then going to add them to our canvas, which is our fabric quilt top. And you see I've pieced uh, some pieces together, and this is just very nice. simple straight stitching, and I uh -huh. know our viewers know what we're doing here, but let me just show you. We just take this to our machine here, and I'm going to just simply stitch all of the pieces together. So this That's project... Just a straight stitch that exactly. you're using there. And this project goes together very, very quickly. So if you need a special gift for someone, this mm -hmm. would be a great... Uh, nice project to make. Okay, so, so I would just continue there. finish there. And then I take my appliques, and you see I've already placed some of them mm -hmm. into place here. There's the flowers, and there's your, your fried egg flower and your uh, roses. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to Let's take my appliques, and I want it to water come trickling down from the watering can onto the flowers. Mm -hmm. And this would all be hand stitched or machine stitched into place, uh, whatever your preference is. Uh -huh. I'll put these little ones back there yeah. so we can see what that looks like. That gives you the effect. Mm -hmm. And once this is all done, we now will um, add the batting mm -hmm. and add the back to the, the quilt and your binding, of uh -huh. course. And then your finishing touches are the really nice hand stitches that outline the flowers and if we take another look at our model you'll see how we have hand stitches outlining the flowers and then very nice hand stitches actually creating the feeling of the water coming down onto the flowers. It's a <laughs> lovely project and it certainly has that Mary Inglebright look to it. Doesn't it? I think so and I think anyone that's a fan of her artwork will love to get this as a, um, a gift or even you know, make it for yourself. I mean, it's, right. it's easy and it's lovely and delightful and whimsical. Well, thank you, Ellie, for joining me here. My pleasure. Thank you. Every quilt tells a story, and today we have with us Shirley Greenhoe, who has many quilts with many stories. She's a celebrity long arm teacher. Welcome, Shirley. Thank you, Jane. Great to be here. I see you have brought several quilts and one has ships and mariners compasses on it. Can you tell us a little about that? I, I can. I came from San Diego. That's where I was born. So the ocean is part of my life. It's called Take Dramamine because Take I <laughs> like the ocean but it doesn't like me back and I get sick every time. <laughs> and that quilt was hung in the very first machine quilter showcase in Duluth. Oh. And it was because of that quilt that I became a teacher teaching my freestyle so technique. Notice then. Yeah. And then you have an Amish looking quilt. Yes. That was done with a, a group of friends, swap a block technique, come up with some rules, blacks, colors, and then make eight of one and swap it out and then invent well, a quilt from there. And it's all, again all freestyle quilting. Yeah, those are always fun yeah, to get involved in, have a little social time with the mm -hmm. other quilters. And then you have one that kind of looks like tumbling blocks or, Tum or uh, tumblers. Correct. Yep, tumbler it's called. And it's, um, it's from my life of crime when I first started quilting in 1986. I would take a chunk of fabric from the back of the customer's quilt, <laughs> the leftover fabric, uh -huh. and collect them. It took me about 10 years and I got enough to make a charm quilt. So I call the quilt Grand Theft. Oh. <laughs> Well, and it's a charm, that means there's not two pieces alike. Correct, none. They, no repeats at all. Some are kind of similar, but no repeats. Oh, that's really a clever idea. <laughs> I try Ooh, that. everyone's thinking now. <laughs> yeah, and then you have, um, well, this quilt here, this one is a bear's paw. It's, it looks like a bear's paw. It's a little bit of a variation, a little different than a bear's paw, but we could call it such. Uh -huh. And I made this one. I moved to Montana two and a half years ago. My husband's work took us there from California, native Californian. And um, this quilt, it was the biggest fire season Montana had seen since 1910, and he was gone a lot. So this quilt has smoke in it. It's sad because I was homesick. There's fire, um, and there's a few bright spots where I met new friends. So many emotions in a quilt. And then you have a pumpkin quilt. <laughs> My pumpkins. Jack-o'-lanterns, to be precise. Oh, jack-o'-lanterns. Um, Gosh, first grade, kindergarten, a little rhyme learned in school. 
Five little jack-o'-lanterns sitting on a gate. The first one said, my, it's getting late. The second one said, I hear a noise. The third one said, oh, it's just some boys. The fourth one said, let's all run. The fifth one said, it's Halloween fun. Ooh, went the wind, and out went the lights, and away they all ran on Halloween night. I also learned the preamble of the Constitution when I was in school, but I can't recite that. <laughs> but I can do five little jack-o'-lanterns. And your form of quilting or your technique almost has that look of wind or water. You do a freehand echoing like no one else with the long arm machine. And I see you have one row started in here, but we'd like to see you do a well, little of that technique. My pleasure. Get a little going here. I kind of like that echo look that you get with a, whoops, that you get with a um, Methodist fan. Uh -huh. And this kind of suggests that. It isn't, but it gives that suggestion. And I don't like it to be dead even, and I don't like it to be um, symmetrical. So you just do a, a swirl and it just comes out of your soul and then you just echo it, it yeah. and keep your distance a little each yeah, time? Yeah, I don't worry too much that it's, that it's dead precise. I don't mind that some of the, the lines are a little further apart than the others. That doesn't bother me a bit. Just around and around. go. Beautiful. It's sort of like the old-fashioned echoing. And then how do you gauge your distance in between? Just by eye or just do you measure eye. by the foot a no, little? No, I'm not, I'm not using the foot. It is just eye. And I really don't mind that, they're, that they vary a little bit. In fact, I kind of like that. I kind of like that mm, windy, natural, wavy sort of effect that I get. Thank you for sharing those wonderful stories and techniques. It's been my pleasure, and I look forward to seeing you at the next Quilt Central Retreat. Besides the obvious beauty quilts hold, as you've just heard, many of them contain an equally wonderful story. Another place where you will find a wealth of stories is a bed and breakfast. Let's visit one. And then a lot of people, I think, are surprised that uh, we have this out in the middle of the country and it's just kind of a special place and a nice quiet place. I've had some people who have come in and uh, said it's just such a restful place that it's, um, it's almost like coming home to grandmother's uh, house and, and especially when they have breakfast. <laughs> uh, my husband for our 30th wedding anniversary bought the plans for Eight Gables Inn for me for my wed uh, wedding anniversary. So we kicked the idea around for a couple of years and worked on our property out here that we'd owned for several years. And he said that uh, if I wanted to give it a try, we'd do it as a bed and breakfast. It was just too big for two people, so we'd just kind of share it with everybody else. So we worked on the property about two years and then started to build the uh, Foxbriar Farm. It took about a year and a half, a little over a year to uh, build it. We um, have nine guest rooms, so each one of those has a different theme. It was a lot of fun to decorate them. I'd collected different things through the years and not always had a lot of uh, room to display them. So when we built Foxbriar Farm, I had lots of room to display these things and all of them kind of had different uh, Themes not something that you would put in one house if you were decorating it in a particular theme, but something that you could use in different rooms with different themes. I've always uh, liked tea, and so we had a, a room that's called Time for Tea and has a tea spode tea setting in there and that's the way I decorated that room. I decorated it around the spode tea set and found um, wallpaper border that matched the colors and just a little bit of this and a little bit of that and it all came together and we made Fox Bright Farm. 
If you're wondering where to keep all those little doodads that you have for crafting or quilting, my guest today has a great project that will help you organize them. Joining me is Maddie Bushman, who is a quilting expert. Welcome, Maddie. Thank you very much. Hi, Donna. How are you doing today? I am just fine. And you? Wonderful. Couldn't be better. Good. Now, I know you do crafting and you do quilting and you have all those little things that you have to organize. And you've brought something that's great today. This happens to be one of my most favorite projects. It is a clothespin hanger. Now, what have you done here? You've made a block. This is the tumbling block. Uh huh. But I did add a couple of different features that I thought would make it just a little bit more challenging. What I did was I embroidered, and that's uh -huh. what we're going to do first. Okay. And we'll talk about that first. Then I did the bordering on the diamonds. That looks really nice. It is. I love that. Now, I know these computerized machines make it very simple to do embroidery, and I'm hoping you're going to tell us how we do that. I certainly am. All it takes is just two simple steps. You okay. press a button and change the foot, and you're ready to embroider. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I selected these little flowers mm -hmm. to match the flowers that are in the fabric. Right. And we'll take our card, which is a, an embroidery design mm -hmm. card. We're going to put it into the card reader because okay. this card is from a different generation. Uh-huh. So we slide it into the card reader. Okay. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select the embroidery mode. Right. And then once we have the embroidery mode, then we're going to select the card reader. Uh-huh. And then we're going to select the design of our choice, which in this case happens to be number 14. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to go to the edit screen because you may notice on the diamonds that some of them are smaller and then I have one that's larger. Right. So initially, I went into the edit screen, uh -huh. and then I reduced the size of the design to 90%. Okay? Uh -huh. And then I was able, with my directional arrows, I went ahead and put it in the place that I would like it to be. Then I changed the hoop size. I wanted to be able to use my smaller hoop because I'm only using a right. small design. And so I chose the smaller hoop. Then you just say, OK. And we're ready. And I'm ready to go. So now what we're going to do is I went ahead and put my A hoop mm -hmm. in the cloth setter. OK. Now we cut about an 8 by 8 or 10 by 10, whichever you'd like to use. You can even use smaller. Okay. It depends. And we put it in the cloth setter. And what have you put on the back of this? I have used an iron-on stabilizer, mm -hmm. a tear-away. You can use iron-on. You can use just any kind of okay. stabilizer that you want to that you find most comfortable okay. to use. Okay? Now, in some cases, we would center, we would mark our crosshairs so that we would be able to center the design. But since we're going to be centering the design after the fact, okay. it doesn't matter. And it's easier okay. when you don't have to line it up. <laughs> exactly. And then we just tighten up the screw, the set screw for the mm -hmm. hoop. OK? And usually you want your fabric in there taut but not tight. OK. OK? And then we just slide it under here, just like so. Turn the key. So simple. I know. I know. I love this. And then, then it's ready to go? Yes. That it is, is ready amazing. to go. Yes, it's it's wonderful. I just love it. So what I'm going to do is just press start. And I'm going to take a couple of stitches. And then I'm stopping the machine because I want to cut off the extra thread. Uh -huh. Cut off your extra thread and start it back up again. And we can let that go while we're yes, talking. Yes, we certainly can. And we can set this aside because okay. for right now, we're done with the cloth setter. Now, talk a little, here was one that was at full size, and then this one was at 90%. Is that how you did it, or? Well, actually, these two are at 90%, okay. and then I enlarged this to 120%. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I wanted them to be a little bit larger. Plus, what I did here was I stopped. 
and change the thread. I changed the thread so that I wanted them to be two different colors so that they could kind of coordinate with the other blocks. So even though there's a set pattern, you have a little bit of versatility that you can work within your designs, which is really nice. Absolutely. You can do color editing, uh -huh. which is a wonderful, wonderful feature. You can change colors, you can change the size, you, and also, if you notice that I have done a mirror image here. Uh-huh. See, these are both right. facing the same direction. Then I flipped it. Just That's to make right. it just a little, a little bit different. different. Now, yes. how did you do the block that you have here? I know I see all these pieces. Right. Now, what we did here, just to make it a little bit more fun, mm -hmm. is we have our diamond. Right. And then we take one-inch strips uh -huh. and border them. And we use so our quarter inch foot uh -huh. and just border them. Now, what I do want to say, I want to give you a, a tip on this. Okay. This is very important, is before you start cutting out right. the diamond that you've embroidered, uh -huh. you need to establish this diamond first. Okay. And the reason being is once you add your side borders to it, mm -hmm. it does change the size and shape of the original diamond. Okay. Okay, so once you have bordered it, mm -hmm. okay, on all four sides, then what you would do is create your own template. Uh -huh. Okay, and, and you would use your ruler to yeah. measure, and then you would make your template and cut it out so that you would have an accurate template okay. for when you go to cut out the embroidered designs. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that, and, and we see, you're using a piece of fabric without any... Uh, lines on it. So once that's finished, you would then cut out. And you showed me you had some lines on the template to right. line up with the pattern here. What I did was, for the first one that I did, I wanted to establish a center point. Uh -huh. Okay? And then once I established the crosshairs, which are here, mm -hmm. okay, that's the center of the diamond, then I kind of just etched around the flower and the stem so that I, I was able to maintain that same center position of my flower. Uh huh. So that when I moved over here, you, you see I had it well. lined up again. Good. Right. Now, you talk about being able to do a special trick when you sew these together. So we can start talking about that while that's finishing up its embroidery. Right. Now, you know, everybody has their own method mm -hmm. of putting together the tumbling block. Right. And many times I have tried it in other ways that are in different books, mm -hmm. and I have not found it as easy as the one that I came up with a few years back. Great. Well, let's show them how you do that one. Okay. Now, obviously, we don't have enough time right now to finish the leaves uh -huh. on the embroidery, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stop it. Okay. But you know what? I can come back to this, because when I stop this, I have the numbers on there that tell me exactly Great. where I was. Now we're going to show you how to put this together. Okay. We've already sewn the two diamonds together here, mm -hmm. okay? And now we're going to lay this one here, okay? And we mark where the seams will intersect. Okay. But before we do that, before we sew this, we want to make a little nip here uh -huh. and a little nip here. Okay. Not so much so that you're within the seam allowance. Cutting off the point. Just cut off the point where the okay. seams will intersect. And then what you do is you just go ahead and sew this. And you can just lay it right on top of each other. Uh-huh. And you stitch right down to that line. Right. You're going to stitch right down to the line. Now, you'll notice with the quarter-inch foot, we're going to put our memory down. You can go one step at a time and make sure you have it in the needle down yep. position. Then we're going to lift the presser foot, mm -hmm. flip it around like oh, so. Oh, look at how easy that is. Right, and then what you might want to do is just take one of your pins and just kind of eliminate any bulk that you uh -huh. might have underneath there, okay? Because it does have a tendency to bunch up and make sure that it's laying absolutely flat. Yep. Continue and then that. we just continue on. That. Around, the, down the line there, and we're coming down to the stretch, and you're going to open it up, and it's going to be a perfect tumbling block. Voila! Isn't that great? Thank you, Maddie. It's super. Thank you very much. 
quilt around the clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free at 1-866-PADUCA.